Hello and welcome to day 10 of the game development blog, or a journal I should say. Uh, so we're building a game in Unity here, taking it one step at a time. Uh, I worked on quite a lot today. I put in a ton of time coding up a little utility tool that I'm building into Unity itself to help with the dialogue management. And I uh, actually ended up building it three different ways today. Uh, every time I sort of, it, it got a little complex and I thought I don't really want it to, to be this way. So I scrapped it and I started again. And finally I came up with a solution that I think is going to be fairly um, uh, simple to use in the long run. So uh, let's just review. I have a cutscene trigger and that's uh, managed by a cutscene object down here in the bottom left. I'm just gonna click on it. You can see my cutscene trigger is just basic. It just has a, um, a collider, so I know that I'm walking into it. And then I'm attaching a uh, cuts, uh, cutscene controller to this, because I'm running everything off of controllers, and then I'm going to have models and view-based architecture. So the controller for the cutscenes uh, is simply going to take the game controller, and then I added something called a cutscene data. So I'm going to go into the cutscene controller real quick just to show you. Um, so I did change this a little bit. There was, this is pretty much the same as it was before. Um, I had the start and everything, and I, and I had this on trigger, and before it was just um, triggering the uh, start cutscene for the game controller, and that's about it. Uh, so I added um, a call to next line, which I already sort of had before, but next line, all it was doing is exiting out. But I have a call to next line now, and I also um, just log here that the cutscene started just so for me to visually see that everything is working. I typically use debug logs as I'm working through things just to check that it's hitting the parts that I want it to hit in the right order anyways. Um, so this next line that we had before, I expanded it quite a bit here. So what it does is it checks to see if the dialog ID is zero. And I'm updating the dialog ID as the key marker for where I want to go next with the dialog. I'm not doing it uh, like a linear dialog where everything's back to back in a list. I could do it that way and it's set up that it could, it could work. But the problem with that is if you all of a sudden you want to jump around or you want to add something later on that's sort of not in that sequence, then you're, then you're stuck. You can't do that. So I'm going a different direction. I'm doing everything based off of dialogue IDs. So I can jump anywhere I want in my list of dialogue very easily by just referencing an ID. But in order to get out of that, to know that we're at the end, I have to have a way of signaling that this is the end. So I'm using the zero index or the zero ID to signal, that's it, I'm done. So that's what this is checking for is the zero. And then, um, so I uh, enable the, um, the or sorry, I turn off the collider so it's not gonna hit it anymore. We did that before. I also call end cutscene in the game controller. We also did that before. And uh, I'm actually utilizing the existing dialog box I had from week one. I'm not gonna use this dialog box in the future, but I needed something just to see that it was working. I'm hiding the dialog box here because this is all, it's done. And I'm just setting a debug to see that it has ended and then I'm returning. Now, if the dialog ID was not zero, it does this whole thing here where it runs through and it gets the proper text based on the, the dialog dictionary that I have. I actually set that up up here. I'm using a list in the serializable database um, because dictionaries are not serializable at this time. So, uh, but I like working with dictionaries, especially when I have a dialog ID. So what I do is I take the, um, I get the dialog list from our dictionary or from our database and then I convert it into a dictionary here. So I, I assign the dialog to the dialog ID in the dictionary, and then I can come down here and just access it very simply. So uh, I do that, and then let's see here. I go through each, every time I pick one based on the ID, I go through the a set of options that are assigned to that dialog. So options are like continue on with the dialog, um, end the dialog, or give an answer like yes, no, true, false, lie, um, or tell the truth, all that kind of stuff. So those are different choices that a player can make. So I just loop through all those different choices that are assigned to this dialogue. And just right now, I'm just looking for continue and end. So if it says continue, move on to the next piece of dialogue. And if it says end, set the ID to zero. And so we can exit out on the next pass around. In the future, I'll have it list out all the options that players can choose, but I'm not there quite yet. All right, so that's pretty much the changes to the cutscene controller. It's just going through, but the main thing here is the dialogue database, which had to be built out for this to actually work. So that took that's what took forever because I rewrote all of this uh, code here for the editor window. 
and I deleted all the other creating stuff. Um, so if I go over to the uh, Unity here, I had things like, um, I still have the databases, but that's for the existing item database that I have. I did have it where I could create cutscene databases here, as well as in the assets create. I had down here where I could create cutscene stuff as well and dialogue stuff. I took all of that out and switched it over to a cutscene uh, editor, which is right here. So the cutscene editor that I designed here, I've been building this out. It's not 100% yet, but it's enough that it actually can function properly. So I, I can come in and set a, uh, a new cutscene. So I have uh, some default areas set up, the shop intro and the house intro. So I can pick one and then create a cutscene for it. Um, and it will only create one. So if I've already created one, it's not going to duplicate them over and over. It's only one cutscene per location. I have a save button here, which was just mainly for debugging. I don't think I actually need this, but it's good to have it. Uh, so right now we're currently editing in the, uh, the shop intro. And I have uh, the ability to uh, go to a specific dialogue ID. So I can I have one, two, or I can set like a third one or a fourth one based on how many pieces of dialogue I want in this cutscene. And this is going to get or create the dialogue again, so I don't have duplicates. I can say, you know, get me uh, dialogue ID number two, and it'll get one if there's existing. If there isn't one existing, it'll create a brand new one for me. This is just a uh, talking about what current dialogue we're editing in here. Again, this needs to be cleaned out so it's a little bit more intuitive, but um, right now it's editing one of two dialogues. Uh, we can go to the next one. So we're editing two of two dialogues or the previous next. Uh, there's no next, but previous next, previous next, right? So it just cycles through all the different pieces of dialogue. And every piece of dialogue has a few things. It has a character that's speaking. So in this case, Rem, I will have a character list that this can have a drop down. I just select whatever character I want. And then I have a uh, character icon that I can choose to, if I want, show a little icon, like a little face image, a selfie of the character when the dialogue pops up. And then I have my dialogue text, obviously. So the first one here, first piece of dialogue says, good morning, my boy. And then the next one says a little blurb here. I'm going to have to still work out where the long text gets cut off into multiple um, pieces. But for now, um, this is fine. Or I'm just going to display the text a little bit differently. But the way I have it set up right now, this gets cut off a little bit. So that needs a little bit of work. Um, after you set the text, you have the, um, this should not say cutscene editor. That should say options or choices. So we have choices here that we can set. These are the different choices. So you can pick a choice and then add it, uh, add a new choice. And uh, then it shows up in a list down here. Right now on this piece of dialogue, I only have one choice and that is uh, end, an end choice. So that sets the dialogue ID to zero. This is sort of redundant because it does it in the code. Uh, but this uh, drop down here, which are the, all the IDs of the scenes created or the dialogues created shows up here. Um, this is where you would, um, oh, what's going on there? This is where you would select what dialogue to jump to next. In this case, the end doesn't jump to anything, so it's zero. If I go to the previous, you'll see that um, this is the first bit of text, so it does have a choice of continue, meaning there is no actual choice the user makes, but the the dialogue does continue on through some sort of a, a story. So it goes on to the second. This is a pretty simple one. It just goes to the second piece of dialogue. All right, so that's the utility I built. It, again, it needs a bit of cleaning up, but it does all the actual configuration that I need for right now. I'm going to be adding stuff to it as well as cleaning the look of that, uh, but I'm happy with what I got done today. So let's just play the game and see um, what this looks like. So same thing, haven't really changed any graphics wise, but um, if we go up here and we hit the trigger, uh, everything freezes. Um, well, not freezes, but I lose control of the keyboard for moving the character and the dialog box pops up. It says, good morning, my boy. That was the very first um, thing here. See, good morning, my boy. And then uh, if I click E to progress through, it says, uh, good afternoon, old man. So what do you need today? And it just uh, goes through the dialogue. Obviously, it cuts off a little bit. I'm going to be changing how all this stuff is displayed to work with this better. But if we go to the second one, you can see that there's the um, there's the bit of text. And since this has a choice of end, setting it to zero, if I hit E again, it just ends out. And then I can continue on moving along. So I built the system out to function with that trigger so I can add as many things as I want. In fact, let's just be a little daring here. I have not uh, done, I've not really fully tested this out yet, but why don't we go ahead and add a third 
dialog ID and we'll do a live demo which typically breaks but what are you going to do so we'll have a uh, hunter who spoke last room okay so we'll have hunter say something again um wow what a dialog demo this is okay so um this one will actually um oh i see something i have to actually do here so this one will actually end, so I'll add that choice. I have to have a way of deleting this or not having a set of default. But anyways, I set dialog IDs to zero, so it's gonna cancel out anyways. I do have to remember to set the second dialog not to continue anymore, but to, um, uh, see, I need a way of deleting this. But anyways, we'll just do this right here. Continue, add, and I can actually go in and delete that manually inside the database. So I'll just do that now. But I will set up a little button here to delete that. So where are we here? Um, element two here is the hunter character acting. Wow, this is a dialogue. Okay. So we have a choice of continue, which we don't want anymore. So I'm just going to delete that um, and switch it over to end. And that's zero. Um, also, I think on this one, I had choices. I need just one choice there of continue on to three. And hopefully that updated here, yes it did. And this, uh, perfect. Okay, so once I get the delete button there, I can do all that from within my cutscene editor. Um, okay, let's play that and see if that uh, worked. Okay, so, okay, there we go. So we got good morning, my boy. That's the second thing. And then, wow, what a dialog demo this is. Perfect, so hit again and it exits out. So there you go, I have a piece of a, a tool or a utility that I can then manage all my dialog and it works. I can extend my dialog, make it smaller. And you can see one of my trigger, one of my, uh, these two things are too close together there. But yeah, that's what I worked on today. So thanks for watching, day 10 is done and uh, subscribe if you wanna follow along. If you have any questions or want me to go more in depth on how I actually build these things out, let me know in the comments and uh, talk to you later, bye-bye.